In this discussion, we will focus on what can be expected in the JBCC Edition 6.2 course and in the Contract Comparisons course. Just a quick introduction and background of myself so you know who I am. My name is Johan Fuljun. I am a quantity surveyor by trade and I have studied through the University of the Free State from 1996 to finished in 1999 and started my full-time career in 2000. I have been on construction sites for about 75% for the past 22 years. So I've been directly involved in construction matters, projects, and I have worked in eight different countries, either on a bespoke contract or the general conditions of contract in that specific country. And these projects varied from a few million rand up to 650 million US, which at the time was about, call it 7 billion rand. So it was quite an experience for me. I'm the commercial lead and I'm dealing with commercial aspects, disputes, claims for various clients. And I am also an arbitrator myself. UCCC has an accredited JBCC edition 6.2 course and it deals with the differences between the edition 6.2 and 6.1 which starts with the definitions and I think what makes this training manual if I can call it workable is if we for example look at the definitions is that it puts the two definitions the 6.1 and the 6.2 definitions on the same page and you can then immediately notice the differences between the two definitions of the uh, two editions so i think that's that's makes it very workable and easier to identify the training manual also illustrates the differences in clauses uh, so that gets discussed in detail and we even uh, put a list together with clause references of all the principal agents obligation and duties so i think that's also very nice nice to have a uh, list if we start at clause 1.1 the definitions it is noticeable that there are a lot of definitions that changed it was either by an addition of a word or words a deletion of some word or words or a completely new definition or the deletion, deletion of a definition. So I think for this session, we're just going to look at some or certain definitions that changed, obviously not all of them. So we'll have a look at the definition of agreement, contract documentation, contract instruction, defect, interest, and the definition of notice. If we look at the definition of agreement, I'm going to read you the edition 6.1 definition of agreement. This JBCC principal agreement and the completed JBCC PBA contract data. So it was quite short. The edition 6.2 reads as follows. The completed JBCC principal building agreement and JBCC contract data, the contract drawings, the price document, and any other documents reduced to writing and signed by the authorized representatives of the parties. So it's very clear that contract drawings and the price document and any other documents reduced to writing and signed by the authorized representatives of the parties are added. So it, quite, it is quite longer and includes certain additional documentation by ex express reference to them. So it is evident that this, uh, that the edition 6.1 only made provision for documents that were included in the contract data. So it was dependent on what was included in the contract data. And it is, it should be remembered that in practice, some other documents should form part of the agreement even if it's not specifically listed in the contract data. So subsequently, the definition of contract documents were deleted. We will get to contract documents in the following slide. So as we saw in the previous 
slide the definition for agreement. The 6.2 edition includes now by express reference the contract draw drawings and the price document. So if we look at contract documents definition of the 6.1 edition, it read as follows. The agree this agreement, the contract drawings, the price document and other identified documents in the contract data. So 6.2, the 6.2 edition does not have a definition for contract documents because the reference to the contract drawings and the price document is now included in the agreement definition. So it's been deleted in its entirety for the definition of contract documents. So the following one is contract instructions. So the 6.1 edition defined it as a written instruction issued by or under the authority of the principal agent to the contractor, which may include drawings and other construction information. So the 6.2 changed as follows. A written instruction issued by or under the authority of the principal agent to the contractor that may include drawings, photographs and other construction information. So you'll see that photographs are added, which in general, I think in this day and age is very, very rele relevant. And it now expressly allows for it. So there's no need to wonder or ponder about it. It is included. The addition 6.1 defines a defect as follows. Any aspect of material and workmanship forming part of the works that does not conform to the contract documents. The 6.2 edition reads as follows. Any aspect of materials and workmanship forming part of the works that does not conform to the agreement and or other construction information. So it's clear that they've added in the 6.2 edition the word agreement. And this is due to the fact that contract documents definition were deleted in the 6.2 edition. And that obviously it automatically includes the drawings and the price documents because of the use of agreement. If we look at interest in the JBCC, I think it's very interesting to see how JBCC included various types of interests. And it's without any doubt very innovating and different from other forms of contract. So let's have a look and see what changed. The definition for interest, no, and no specific interest, just the definition for interest, is found in the edition 6.1 and 6.2. And as you can see on the slide, that there is no difference. That remained exactly the same. The edition 6.1 had a definition for mora interest, which was the rate of interest applicable from time to time prescribed in the relevant act. If you have a look at the edition 6.2, you will note that this definition is no more of any existence. It's been deleted in its entirety and the edition 6.2 now includes a compensatory interest and default interest definition. If we look at default interest, obviously, as, as we said previously, that the edition 6.1 does not include a definition for default interest or doesn't deal with default interest for that matter. The 6.2 definition reads as follows interest at six percentage points per annum above the ruling rate of interest where payment has not been received within the stipulated period, compounded monthly from the due date for payment until the date of payment. So it is six percentage points above the ruling rate of interest, which if you look at the definition of interest, it states the central or reserve bank of the country. By the same token, compensatory interest was also not used in edition 6.1 and is 
is used in edition 6.2. So the definition reads as follows. Interest due to the contractor at the ruling rate of interest on amounts certified after 31 calendar days of the date of practical completion, compounded monthly until the date of payment. So it's interesting to see that the Default interest relates to payment and the compensatory interest relates to certified and it relates to period after practical completion. The last definition that we will be looking at is notice. The edition 6.1 and 6.2 deals with it. So let's have first have a look at 6.1. A communication issued by either party the principal agent and or agents to the other party or any agent to inter alia record an event request for outstanding information and or where suspension and or resumption of the works or termination of this agreement is contemplated. 6.2 reads as follows, a written communication excluding social media issued by either party, the principal agent and or agents to the other party, the principal agent and or agents to inter alia record an event request outstanding in construction information or where suspension or resumption of the works and or termination of this agreement is contemplated. So it's a mouthful, but I think in essence is that in the 6.2 edition it expressly exclude social media and in this day and age it has become so part of our lives so i think it's a good move to exclude that as i and i'm talking personally i don't see social media as any formal method of communication let's look at two clauses that changed in edition 6.2 or I would rather say it disappeared completely. So the first one deals with the employer that needs to identify services connections. Edition 6.1 clause 12.1.5 reads as follows. The employer shall identify access to water, sewer, stormwater and or electricity connections to the site. If we look at edition 6.2, it does have a clause 12.1.5, but the wording relates to something completely different and not services connections. The edition 6.1 wording is entirely deleted in edition 6.2, so you will not find services connections clause uh, or clauses relating to services connection at all. The second clause that we will be looking at relates to the statutory and other notices. So edition 6.1 clause 12.1.6 reads as follows. The employer shall list statutory and other notices the contractor must submit and or comply with before possession of the site can be given. So edition 6.2 does have a clause 12.1.6, but as per the clause 12.1.5 previously discussed, it's got the clause, but the wording relates to something completely different. So the effect of this is that the wording as per the clause 12.1.6 of edition 6.1 is completely deleted entirely in the, in the, in the edition 6.2. So in practice, if we look at 6. Point, edition 6.1, the contractor could claim against the employer if all the requirements were not listed. And the same principle did apply for clause 12.1.5 of edition 6.1. But now in the edition 6.2, this entitlement is removed. So instructions will happen. I mean, it's, the, it's a construction or building pro project things will be changed, modified, uh, additional information provided, etc. So the questions are always, who may issue it? Can the instruction be verbal? If it is verbal, is it valid? Can it be done? What must be done? Must the instruction be in writing? 
when we've done the training manual on this course, I think it was very interesting, definitely for myself, to physically sit and do a comparison between the four general conditions contracts. The, and it became very clear of how the each specific contract deals with with these type of type of things. Does it have a definition? How does it compare what's expressly provided for in the in the in the, in the contract? So uh, let's on instructions, let's have a look how each contract deals with it in the definitions part of it. Firstly FIDIC, the red book. FIDIC doesn't have a definition for instructions. JBCC subclause 1.1 does have a definition for it, which reads a written instruction issued by or under the authority of the principal agent to the contractor that may include drawings, photographs and other construction information. So it's very specific what is a contract instruction. The NEC, like the FIDIC, hasn't got a definition for it. And the same with the GCC. If we look at clauses in each of the general conditions of contracts, each contract deals with it a bit differently. Clause obviously provide much more detail than what is discussed here. But in short, FIDIC, if there is an oral instruction, it may be valid, but it must be confirmed within a specific time period. That's fairly clear in clause 3.3. The JBCC, the oral instruction has no effect. A contract instruction must be in writing. That's stated in clause 17.3. The NEC states that the instruction must be in writing. That's in clause 13.1. And the GCC says that an oral instruction or oral order may be valid in certain circumstances. Uh, if you look at subclause 6.3.2, but it's always advisable to confirm any oral instruction in writing. It just takes any ambiguity away and future disputes and fights. So this brings us to the end of the session. I want to thank everybody for listening to us again it's much appreciated and i trust that we assisted in answering some of your questions please contact us if we can assist any further